Good morning and thank you for joining us here today at Oil for the Journey. We're reading the book of Joshua chapters 10 through 12. We're following the Bridges for Peace Ignite the Truth Bible reading plan. So let's just go ahead and get started. Father, we're so grateful for today, for your promises are true. Your words are yes and amen. God, and I pray that your people will be encouraged and strengthened as you speak to us today through your word. Your word is truth. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And I thank you, Lord, that we will draw nigh to you. And you said you would draw nigh to us, God. Thank you for a relationship. It's life, God. We can't live it without you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard that Joshua had captured and completely destroyed Ai and killed its king, just as he had destroyed the town of Jericho and killed its king. He also learned that the Gibeonites had made peace with Israel and were now their allies. He and his people became very afraid when they heard all this because Gibeon was a large town, as large as the royal cities and larger than Ai. And the Gibeonite men were strong warriors. So King Adonai Zedek of Jerusalem sent messengers to several other kings, Hoham of Hebron, Param of Jarmuth, Japhia of Lachish, and Debir of Eglon. Come and help me destroy Gibeon, he urged them, for they have made peace with Joshua and the people of Israel. So these five Amorite kings combined their armies for a united attack. They moved all their troops into place and attacked Gibeon. The men of Gibeon quickly sent messengers to Joshua at his camp in Gilgal. Don't abandon your servants now, they pleaded. Come at once, save us, help us. For the Amorite kings who live in the hill country have joined forces to attack us. So Joshua and his entire army, including his best warriors, left Gilgal and set out for Gibeon. Do not be afraid of them, the Lord said to Joshua, for I have given you victory over them. Not a single one of them will be able to stand up against you. Joshua traveled all night from Gilgal and took the Amorite armies by surprise. The Lord threw them into a panic and the Israelites slaughtered great numbers of them at Gibeon. Then the Israelites chased the enemy along the road to Beth Horon, killing them all along the way to Ezekiah and Makeda. As the Amorites retreated down the road from Beth Horon, the Lord destroyed them with a terrible hailstorm from heaven that continued until they reached Ezekiah. Uh, uh, the hail killed more of the enemy than the Israelites killed with the sword. On the day the Lord gave the Israelites victory over the Amorites, Joshua prayed to the Lord in front of all the people of Israel. He said, let the sun stand still over Gibeon and the moon over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stayed in place until the nation of Israel had defeated its enemies. Is this event not recorded in the book of Jashir? The sun stayed in the middle of the sky and it did not set as on a normal day. There has never been a day like this one before or since when the Lord answered such a prayer. Surely the Lord fought for Israel that day. Then Joshua and the Israelite army returned to their camp at Gilgal. During the battle, the five kings escaped and hid in a cave at Makeda. When Joshua heard that they had been found, he issued this command. Cover the opening of the cave with large rocks and place guards at the entrance to keep the kings inside. The rest of you continue chasing the enemy and cut them down from the rear. Don't give them a chance to get back to their towns for the Lord your God is giving you victory over them. So Joshua and the Israelite army continued the slaughter and completely crushed the enemy. They totally wiped out the five armies except for a tiny remnant that managed to reach their fortified towns. Then the Israelites returned safely to Joshua in the camp of Makeda. After that, no one dared to speak even a word against Israel. Then Joshua said, remove the rocks covering the opening of the cave and bring the five kings to me. So they brought the five kings out of the cave, the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish, and Eglon. When they brought them out, Joshua told the commanders of his army, come and put your feet on the king's necks. And they did as they were told. Don't ever be afraid or discouraged, Joshua told his men. Be strong and courageous, for the Lord is going to do this to all of your enemies. Then Joshua killed each of the five kings and impaled them on five sharpened pole, poles, where they hung until evening. 
As the sun was going down, Joshua gave instructions for the bodies of the kings to be taken down from the poles and thrown into the cave where they had been hiding. Then they covered the opening of the cave with a pile of large rocks, which remains to this very day. That same day, Joshua captured and destroyed the town of Makeda. He killed everyone in it, including the king, leaving no survivors. He destroyed them all, and he killed the king of Makeda as he had killed the king of Jericho. Then Joshua and the Israelites went to Libna and attacked it. There too, the Lord gave the, them the town and its king. He killed everyone in it, leaving no survivors. Then Joshua killed the king of Libna, as he had killed the king of Jericho. From Libna, Joshua and the Israelites went to Lachish and attacked it. Here again, the Lord gave them Lachish. Joshua took it on the second day and killed everyone in it, just as he had done at Libna. During the attack on Lachish, King Horam of Gezer arrived with his army to help defend the town. But Joshua's men killed him and his army, leaving no survivors. Then Joshua and the Israelite army went on to Eglon and attacked it. They captured it that day and killed everyone in it. He completely destroyed everyone, just as he had done at Lachish from Eglon. Joshua and the Israelite army went up to Hebron and attacked it. They captured the town and killed everyone in it, including its king, leaving no survivors. They did the same thing to all of its surrounding villages as and just as he had done at Eglon, he completely destroyed the entire population. Then Joshua and the Israelites turned back and attacked Debir. He captured the town, its king, and all of its surrounding villages. He completely destroyed everyone in it, leaving no survivors. He did to Debir and its king just what he had done to Hebron and Libna and its king. So Joshua conquered the whole region, the kings and the people of the hill country, the Negev, the western foothills, and the mountain slopes. He completely destroyed everyone in the land, leaving no survivors, just as the Lord, the God of Israel, had commanded. Joshua slaughtered them from Kadesh Barnea to Gaza, and from the region around the town of Goshen up to Gibeon. Joshua conquered all these kings in their land in a single campaign, for the Lord, the God of Israel, was fighting for his people. Then Joshua and the Israelite army returned to their camp at Gilgal. When King Jabin of Hazar heard what had happened, he sent messages to the following kings, King Jobab of Madan, the king of Shimron, the king of Ashkfa, all the kings of the northern hill country, the kings of the Jordan Valley south of Galilee, the kings of the Galilean foothills, the kings of Nephoth Dor on the west, the kings of Canaan, both east and west, the kings of the Amorites, the Hittites, and the Perizzites, the Jebusites in the hill country, and the Hivites in the towns on the slopes of Mount Hermon in the land of Mizpah. All these kings came out to fight. Their combined armies formed a vast horde, and with all their horses and chariots, they covered the landscape like the sand on the seashore. The kings joined forces and established their camp around the water near Mimrah to fight against Israel. Then the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. By this time tomorrow, I will hand all of them over to Israel as dead men. Then you must cripple their horses and burn their chariots. So Joshua and his fighting men traveled to the water near Miram and attacked suddenly. And the Lord gave them victory over their enemies. The Israelites chased them as far as greater Sidon and Miss Rephathmam. Sorry, y'all. And eastward into the valley of Mizpah until not one enemy warrior was left alive. Then Joshua crippled the horses and burned all the chariots as the Lord had instructed. Joshua then turned back and captured Hazor and killed its king. Hazor had at one time been the capital of all these kingdoms. The Israelites completely destroyed every living, living thing in the city, leaving no survivors. Not a single person was spared and then Joshua burned the city. Joshua slaughtered all the kings and their people, completely destroying them, just as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded. But the Israelites did not burn any of the towns built on mounds except Hazor, which Joshua burned. And the Israelites took all the plunder and livestock of the ravaged towns for themselves. But they killed all the survivors, all the people, leaving no survivors. As the Lord had commanded his servant Moses, so Moses commanded Joshua. And Joshua did as he was told, carefully obeying all the commands the Lord had given to Moses. 
So Joshua conquered the entire region, the hill country, the entire Negev, the whole area around the town of Goshen, the western foothills, the Jordan Valley, the mountains of Israel, and the Galilean foothills. The Israelite territory now extended all the way from Mount Halak, which leads up to Seir, in the south as far north as Baal Gad, at the foot of Mount Hermon in the valley of Lebanon. Joshua killed all the kings of those territories, waging war for a long time to accomplish this. No one in the region made peace with the Israelites except the Hivites of Gibeon. All the others were defeated, for the Lord hardened their hearts and caused them to fight the Israelites. So they were completely destroyed without mercy as the Lord had commanded Moses. During this period, Joshua destroyed all the descendants of Anak who lived in the hill country of Hebron, Debir, Anab, and the entire hill country of Jedda, Judah and Israel. He killed them all and completely destroyed their towns. None of the descendants of Anak were left in the land of Israel, though some still remained in Gaza, Gath, and Ashdod. So Joshua took control of the entire land just as the Lord had instructed Moses. He gave it to the people of Israel as their special possession, dividing the land among the tribes. So the land finally had rest from war. These are the kings east of the Jordan River who had been killed by the Israelites and whose land was taken. Their territory extended from Arnon Gorge to Mount Hermon and included all the land east of the Jordan Valley. King Sahon of the Amorites who lived in Heshbon was defeated. His kingdom included Aror of the edge of Arnon Gorge and extended from the middle of the Arnon Gorge to the Jabbok River, which served as a border for the Ammonites. This territory included the southern half of the territory of Gilead. Sahan also controlled the Jordan Valley and regions to the east from as far north as the Sea of Galilee, as far south as the Dead Sea, including the road to Beth Jeshemoth, and southward to the slopes of Pisgah. King Og of Bashan, the last of the Rephaites, lived in Ashtaroth and Edurai. He ruled a territory stretching from Mount Hermon to Salaka in the north and to all of Bashan in the east and westward to the borders of the kingdoms of Geshir and Makkah. This territory included the northern half of Gilead as far as boundary of King Sahan of Heshbon. Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the Israelites had destroyed the king, the people of King Sahan and King Og, and Moses gave their land as a possession to the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. The following is a list of kings that Joshua and the Israelites' armies defeated on the west side of the Jordan from Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon to Mount Halak, which leads up to Seir. Joshua gave this land to the tribes of Israel as their possession, including the hill country, the western foothills, the Jordan Valley, the mountain slopes, the Judean wilderness, and the Negev. The people who lived in this region were the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. These are the kings Israel defeated. The king of Jericho, the king of Ai near Bethel, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jermuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, the king of Gezer, the king of Debir, the king of Geder, the king of Hormah, the king of Arad, the king of Libna, the king of Adullam, the king of Makeda, the king of Bethel, the king of Tapua, the king of Hefer, the king of Afak, the king of Lasharon, the king of Madon, the king of Hazor, the king of Shimron, Moran, the king of Askshfa, the king of Tanakh, the king of Megiddo, the king of Kadesh, the king of Jokneam in Carmel, the king of Dor in the town of Nafoth Dor, the king of Goyim in Gilgal, the king of Tirzah. In all, 31 kings were defeated. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for this day. Let your people be encouraged and strengthened to know that you are with them fighting on their behalf always in Jesus name Amen thank you for joining us again you all have a great day